<laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. My gosh, thank you, Tamara, so much for joining me here this morning, bright and early at 7.30 in the morning. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Yay! I'm happy to have you here as well. And I'm excited because the reason why we're doing this podcast today is because you're going to share your story with us, your non-negotiable health story, because... As you all know, I've been working on my book, Your Health is Non-Negotiable, Your Six-Week Guide to Total Transformation, and Tamara has agreed to share her beautiful story with us, and that story is going to be featured in my book. So what better way to utilize that story by doing a live Facebook, and then it will be transcribed into my book. So thank you, Tamara, for joining us here today. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I never thought I'd be so happy to talk about this. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a personal story because, um, you know, not everyone deals with PCOS, which is what you're going to be talking to us about today, dealing with hormonal imbalances, but a lot of women do suffer from it. So I thank you so much for sharing that story today. Well, you're very welcome. Um, <laughs> You know, I've been suffering since I was about, I was diagnosed when I was 20 with PCOS and hypothyroidism. Um, and most recently, about three years ago, I was told to have early onset menopause. So the combination of those things are like the hormone trifecta, you know, and, and not in a good way. So I've been struggling to lose weight and keep it off. Um, as I get older, it's getting harder and harder. Um, and so most recently my doctor had suggested since nothing else was really working to go and try some hormone therapies. Um, I have nothing good to say about it. I mean, it's been over a year of trial and error and mainly error. Um, and all that changed in a six week span after I joined your challenge. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Now you joined 2.0, right? I joined 3.0. Oh, yeah. 3. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Time flies. Okay. Yeah. So I remember the call because you called me. I happened to have picked up the phone. I'm sitting downstairs in my studio. We're having a good chat. You're like, Cher, uh, I'm looking for fitness classes. And I'm like, well, I got this really cool program. You're like, eh, I don't know. I'm not that social. I'll see. Maybe I'll do a class or two. And I'm like, look, why don't you come in, try the challenge, see what that does for you. So tell me. I know you were originally looking for just fitness classes. You jumped in. Tamara, what did you experience here? How has the program served you? Well, I'll tell you first and foremost, you're right. Like I was never one to join a group class. I figured I have to go at my own pace. I'm going to do my own thing, super independent. Um, that's the first thing that really shocked me. I thought I'd try it and see. And I really fell in love with the sense of community in your classes because I remember very distinctly, I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea how to do certain moves. And in the back with me was Krista. And she's like, it's okay, just do this. It's okay, you gotta do this. And I mean, without her, you know, I just thought like in no other gym would you find this. In no other gym would someone in the class say, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and I'm gonna help this person. Yeah. Um, and so I, I immediately thanked her and you know, we, I think we connected on that level because we, even she told me like in your classes, the community there, the people there, you don't find these people anywhere else. I mean, they're there to, yes, work out. They're there to encourage. I mean, it's, it's an amazing environment. So that was the first thing that blew me away, and I knew I was hooked after that. Now, we've taught you a lot about how the body works, which yeah. I think is the big score here because now you're learning about hormone regulation. You're learning about how to incorporate the lessons that we teach you in your lifestyle. And as you know, uh, we teach you about the body, but you figure out how to make it work for you, your lifestyle, your genetics, your makeup, your choices, your stress levels, your children's life. So um, as, as you've gone through the program now twice, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you've learned? How have you adapted them? And what has been the result um, that you've experienced? Well, it was, I mean, that's the other thing I had told you when we had spoken is that I'm not looking for a nutrition plan. Like I'm open-minded but I wasn't looking for you to overhaul my that. eating, right? Um, because I figured I had it down. Like I've been, you know, I'm old enough. I think I've done enough things that I thought I knew. I knew nothing because 
coming and meeting you <laughs> and learning what you taught me. Okay. So first of all, I'm no longer afraid of healthy fats, nice. right? Like counting calories and, oh my God, I can't have avocado. Like that changed my life. Um, the fact that I'm fasting and the way you coined it is it's your feeding windows and your fasting windows, not some starvation period. Right. Um, because it was, it scared me at first, just the notion of it. Once I understood the reasoning behind it and how it works, I realized, you know what, I can try this and I don't feel deprived. And I think that's, right. that's one of the biggest things that surprised me was the fact that I'm not hungry. You know, not only when I'm fasting, but when I'm eating, I bring my snack and I have to look at the clock and go, oh, I, sh I have a snack, but you know what? I'm not really hungry. Like when in my life has that ever happened? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so um, by implementing the fasting by implementing the changes in my diet in terms of you know good protein and not like 20 ounces of protein at a meal but a certain amount of protein you know um you know the the veggies and i've noticed that i don't crave sugar anymore the inflammation is down i my hands were always so swollen you know i always felt really bloated that's gone um i just overall head to toe feel like a million bucks um, and I'm sleeping better. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You know, these are things that I learned from your mastermind. So stress management, I, sleep, stress management. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it all it all goes hand in hand, right? So it's hard to pinpoint exactly. Okay, it was this. It was this. It was this. It's everything in harmony that really makes it a really effective program. And I love that word in harmony because it is so true. It is finding that tune and that balance that just allows you to flow through your everyday life because you know you know my health is non-negotiable that's the motto that I have because I'm trying to teach people how to convert their lifestyles I I can't give you a piece of paper and a plan that says follow this because in 6 months that plan's going to be in the drawer like the education of how your body works and then mm -hmm. you creating your personal stance, your belief system, what works for you, your lifestyle, your family's lifestyle, and then also understanding the medical issues that you may have. You know, you're dealing with PCOS, you're on medications, certain things about lifestyle change are going to work for you and certain things aren't. Of course, we work really, really hard to help people get off medication and help them heal their bodies naturally through that um, that hormonal balance of fasting and reducing inflammation in the body. So tell me, the symptoms that you were experiencing before um, and now, how has the program transformed your PCOS issues? Well, with the PCOS specifically, um, insulin resistance is a big factor in that. And I wasn't on medications for that, but I was certainly headed down that path where eventually the PCOS and the insulin resistance will trigger into, will turn into type two diabetes, right? Um, I have noticed that since I've been following your program and my, my weight loss has been triggered again. And so I'm not storing all the belly fat anymore like I was, it's that's the area, that's my trouble area. And that's the place where I've noticed the biggest improvement. Um, it's with really the perimenopause that I had really obvious symptoms um, and that I was on medication for. Um, so I had like sleep disruption, pain in random areas. Um, and of course, like the mood swings, right? They're just right. up and down all the time. I couldn't control it. And I swear, I think it was like into week three of your program in the 3.0 that it hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sleeping better. I'm like, oh my gosh, that doesn't hurt anymore. Like, <laughs> what's going on? And I went cold turkey off, off the hormone therapy. And Amazing. So you completely yeah, dropped it. Completely dropped it. Yeah. And I haven't had any need to go back on it at all. I haven't even told my doctor that I went off of it because it was really up to me. It's not something that you can't quit cold turkey. Um, I just felt like I think I can control this without medical intervention. And like I was telling you, it's you want to say it's it's not just the exercise because I was exercising before. You know, yes, your exercises are, su are super effective. But it's really, it's a combination of things. It's the combination of the fasting, the, the, um, the different combinations of food that I'm trying. Like you're saying that you can't hand me a program and tell me what to eat. I had to try it for myself. And I found what works. Not every day is perfect, but oh my gosh, leaps, just leap years beyond what I was. And I, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I feel, I just feel like I've regained my youth. 
I find too that once you understand how your body works and you find that you might slip off from time to time, like not only do you immediately identify that in the body, like you immediately feel that inflammation, you immediately feel those pangs of depression and that, that, that mental kind of weight and brain fog come down, but you mm -hmm. can identify the source of it being the problem. So for example, because we teach you so much about food and all of a sudden you feel, hey, you know, I'm feeling a lot more depressed than I used to be. I'm lacking the energy and my body's inflamed. You're, you're, you can directly correlate with the fact that, hey, I've been eating a lot more dairy lately or, you know, I stopped eating this or I stopped my fasting windows and I just started eating three, four, six times a day again, right? So you can self-correct, right? Which, which I do. And you know what? Like, it's not a matter of, oh, I can't have this or, you know, I, I'm not allowed to eat that. I don't want to. I went on vacation and sure, you try things you don't normally try, but it didn't trigger a binge for me because I, I could tell by my body's response, that's not the path to go back down. And I didn't want to anymore. Whereas in the past, it, was, it felt like total deprivation, you know, yeah. and that's not that. These are choices I'm making based on education that I was given, I applied it, I saw the results for myself. What more can you ask for? I mean, that, that tells the story itself, you know? It's, it's, it's a whole lifestyle change. It's really, That's really the good. thing, you know, Tamara, we're adults, right? Mm -hmm. And when you go on these diet plans and programs where you're following a piece of paper, you all of a sudden turn into a teenager again because you're being told no. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that rebellious part of you, what I've come to learn about programs is that the minute you get pissed off with life and frustrated with life, you get rebellious and you're like, I'm, I'm going to eat what I want. <laughs> and you're like, you're doing that teenager rebellious thing. And, but you don't quite realize you're doing it against yourself and your own right. mind. Right. So you're like, who are you actually being rebellious against? You're being rebellious against that piece of paper that says you're not allowed to eat a chocolate bar. I'm pissed off. Screw you. I'm going to eat my chocolate bar, you know, versus when you're educated on how your body works, you're pissed off, you're frustrated. You know that if I eat that chocolate bar, I'm only going to amplify the problem. I'm going to make matters worse for me in my own mind. I need to get my mind strong. I need to be in my peak mental performance to get through this problem. I need my body physically fit to conquer this problem. So instead of eating a chocolate bar, I'm going to run down onto my spin bike. I'm going to go for a walk in the woods. I'm going to go for a hike. I'm going to spend time with my kids. I'm going to do something that does not try to solve the problem with food because the food is not solving your problem. You know that. I know that. And it's getting over that chemical addiction, that, that desire, that dopamine craving, like I want that dopamine, I want that, that reward response because I have to feel good in my body. And we teach you how to feel good in your body through physical fitness in those times, in those times of depression, anxiety, panic attacks, anxiousness. Um, being pissed off, being frustrated with something, dealing with the problem outside of rock berries and their pie. <laughs> oh, rock berry. Um, <laughs> you know what? You, you just reminded me. I've, I had suffered from anxiety and panic attacks for years and years and years. And one thing that I did learn was that sugar is a huge trigger for those. Um, you know, and, and what, so I, I knew that by cutting sugar, I would definitely decrease the risk of a panic attack. What I didn't really realize what was triggering my emotional eating was the chemical addiction. And I've been an emotional eater my whole entire life. Um, this is the first time that I can ever remember where I don't feel the need to turn to food when I have a stressful day. Yeah. Like you're saying, you know, I'll, I'll book a class, you know, and say, no, I'm going to go see my friends at Sherry's studio and I'm going to work out. And once I get that done, there's no need, there's no, there's no inclination to turn to food anymore. At least it's the first step, right? Hydration, right. vitamins, fitness is the first step to dealing with that pissed off feeling, listening to really good, happy music. And we work with essential oils as well. So when you go down the checklist of all the things that you can do to try and calm that 
that anger, that frustration, that depression, the anxiety. And then once you get to the bottom of the list, hell, if you've gone through all those 10 steps and mm -hmm. like you're still bummed, then we have your backup plan cheat food, right? That stuff that's not going to put the chemicals, the pesticides, the hormones, the, the preservatives, the, the, the crap. We've found those foods that you can go to so that when you're really craving the chocolate, the sweet, the salt, the crack, the crunch, we've got the backup plans in store for you. So like everything is completely uh, worked out. And I'm happy that you use the word emotional eater because that term has been used forever and the reality is it's not an emotional eater. You're, it's an addiction to food the same way as smoking, alcohol, and heroin, and every, any other, other drug. And the chemical, the, the, the companies that make all these foods went in bed with uh, all the, you know, the large cigarette companies, and they went and, and, and work together with the scientists to figure out, okay, what is the exact response, that chemical connection in the brain that makes cigarettes so addictive? And how do we put that in food? And mm -hmm. they've done that. They've mastered the art of making food an addiction. And the only reason why it's not illegal is because of the massive amount of money that sugar produces and you can buy it anywhere and it's being advertised to you and it's being pumped to you. And you're being told that, you know, Mars bar, it's time to take a break. It's Miller time. You're being pumped all of these messages that says, Hey, you deserve it. You deserve this reward. You deserve a break. You deserve all this stuff. Meanwhile, they're saying, put another cigarette in your mouth, drink, drink more alcohol, you know, take another injection because the, um, the emotional eating, it's that hit, that drive, that, that, uh, that craving, that Jones that you need to satisfy. And people think it, that it's okay. It's like, it's not only okay, it's a must. I have to do it. I, I, I need to fulfill that sugar, that chemical, that, that hit. And once you understand that and you're like, shit, I can't, I can't solve my problems with the chemicals because I might as well go to the Be Betty Ford clinic, right? Like right. that's the same thing as taking a bottle of wine or alcohol and chugging it back to solve your problems. Just the same way as an alcoholic would going downstairs for that cigarette break and having three cigarettes when someone just made you angry, mm -hmm. eating it's that same chemical addiction that you're trying to solve your problem with. And all it does is it makes the problem 10 times worse to solve. It makes you fat. It makes you sick. And what good is that? <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and, and also the fact that when you don't know that it's the chemical addiction and you feel like I'm feeding my emotions, when you try to stop and you can't, you feel like a failure. You feel like, well, I guess I just can't do it. Um, what's the point, you know, and um, when you finally find a way and you understand and you find a way to break the cycle, you realize, you know, it wasn't that I wasn't strong enough. It's just that I wasn't feeding my body the right foods to be able to give myself the power to break it. You so, were nursing the addiction. You know, smokers, absolutely. alcoholics, and drug addicts all know that that's bad because that's what society says. It's bad. They know when they're smoking, they shouldn't be. They know when they've had their seventh glass of alcohol they shouldn't have but when you're eating eating's normal it's natural it's for sale i can buy it on sale i can buy it around the corner um, i feed it to my kids i see commercials about it every day it's what what's the problem yeah. and that's that's the huge problem right there absolutely i mean it's it's the marketing too you know with and the fact that even on tv when i sit and watch tv with my kids and the commercials that come on it's all for sugar-laden foods, fatty foods. And my daughter's sitting there saying, oh, mom, can we buy that? Can we get this? Can we get that? And you know, now she's beginning to understand. She's only eight years old, and now she's understanding, is the food you're eating going to make you sick, or is it going to make you healthy? That's what I tell her. And she sees your videos, and she sees the masterminds that I go through. She sits with me because you know, we, all the family gathers around. <laughs> and, you know, and she'll ask questions. She doesn't stay for the whole hour, but she'll ask questions like, oh, mom, so is that why we don't eat that food anymore? And I'll tell her, yes, absolutely. I said, did you feel good when you were eating that food? How do you feel now? So it's, it's not just me who's benefiting. You know, my entire family is benefiting from the changes that I'm making and the groceries that I'm buying or not buying anymore. 
you know, and switching to the organic meats and, you know, the no hormones, no pesticides, all that makes such a huge difference there. They don't know it now, but they'll know it down the road when they're adults, right? And they have the healthy habits. So that's and that's such a great point because you brought up the organic meats, which is probably the first change that I recommend that everybody does. If they can do nothing else, change the meats. But mm -hmm. people have this misconception that I can't afford to buy the expensive meats and I can't afford to buy organic, you know, $7 broccoli instead of $2 broccoli. But the problem is, is that when they go through the grocery aisles and they're buying all of anything that's in the grocery aisles, like I never hit those aisles, right? Mm -hmm. How many hundreds of dollars are going in your bag, in your basket of all the boxed granola bars, the soups, the dressings, all of those chemicals that you're buying and putting them into the cart and how much money all of them cost when you replace with those natural, healthy, uh, well, look, I'm, I can't get into my whole dairy and meat. You know how I get. I, we're going to be here for three hours now all of a sudden if I go down that road. But um, it's definitely something that we teach in the program. And once you really understand your grocery cart and where the money is really being spent, where your money must be spent, uh, it's, it's a game changer. It's, it's life changing. It is. And at the end of the day, you have to make your health a priority, right? You have to identify what is more important for me. Um, and, and also, I mean, the fact that when I do my groceries now, I'm not just planning my suppers for the family. Those are the meals that I bring to work for my lunches. I'm not buying my lunch anymore. I'm not going through the drive through anymore. I'm not going to get my coffee and my, you know, my donut in the morning. I mean, but you can cut, co you can cut costs in so many places you didn't even realize. Crazy. And that money can go towards buying your healthy groceries, prepping your meals. It, it's all a system, you know, and at the end of the day, when you tally it up, I ended up saving $400 a month. Amazing. I did the exercise. Like it, well, it, you're an accountant, so you would know I that. Am. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I, I'm obsessed with the numbers. You know I love the numbers. I had to know the data. Yeah. So it's, uh, but when it comes to my family's health, cost is not an issue. I, I won't, obviously, if it were costing me $5,000 a month, it would be different, but it's, it's a reasonable adjustment for my family. Yeah. It's an expense we're willing to make and we're benefiting from it. I'm benefiting from it. It's, uh, there's no way we're going back. There's no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, totally. So listen, tomorrow we've had a lot of fun chatting. If you um, met your best friend on the street and she's like, holy crap, what's happened since the last time I've seen you, what would you tell her in 30 seconds or less about this program? I've had this conversation with people and I'll tell you right now, what I say is I'm so excited about being part of Sherry's program, being part of Sherry's community because it's not just an exercise program. You walk in the door, you feel like your family, you get the support you need. If you can't do a move, Sherry's there to tell you, do this modification. It's unlike any group I've ever joined, the systems in place, the knowledge I've gained, have changed my health for the better. I've never felt better. Um, I want this for, for all my friends and family. I want them to feel as good as I feel. have good health and live a long life, there's no reason why they shouldn't join me. And people, you know, they, they know me. I'm, a, I'm an independent person. I don't usually like the group thing. I love this. I've made friends for life now that, you know, as an adult, you think, ah, oh, how many friends do you need? These people have a common goal. We all have a common goal. Our health is non-negotiable. We're working towards it together. We're learning together, trying new things together. Um, I couldn't thank you more for, for what you've given me and for the people that I've met and the knowledge I've gained. Like, it's, it's invaluable. That makes me crazy happy. I've got a slight little uh, camera delay on my side. But, okay. um, yeah, Tamara, like, those are the best words I've heard all day. You know, that, that shows me that what we're doing here – um, has a very powerful mission and I'm so happy that you are a part of it and that you also help us behind the scenes a little bit with, with some of the amazing things that we want to do. We've got a mission to get 2,500 women into this program yeah. and you're playing a major role in helping us get to that goal. So now that my camera's gone all wonky, <laughs> I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to wish you an amazing day. Thank you so much for making your health non-negotiable. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And uh, we'll catch you again on the flip side, right, Tam?
Great. Thank you so high much. High five with the butt slap. Give me my high five with the butt slap. Bye. Bye.